what is the typical flow of a procurement process? Once you receive a request to procure from the internal departments, the first thing done is the finalization of the supplier or vendor from whom the goods are to be procured. Then a formal request is sent to the supplier with the details of the goods and the agreed price by raising a purchase order. Once the vendor delivers the goods to your location, a quality check is done and the goods are inverted by posting a goods. Then we receive the invoice from the vendor for the supply which is evaluated against the purchase order and goods receipt to ensure that the quantity and price are matching. If everything is okay, the invoice is posted against the purchase order. The final step is to make the payment to the vendor for the outstanding liabilities. Now what is the most painful point in this entire process from an accounts payable perspective? The invoice processing. Many issues revolve around invoice processing that adds complexity to the procurement process and ultimately leads to delays in payments and penalties. This is where the evaluated receipt settlement comes into picture. Hey, this is Abhiram and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to see the most common issues faced in invoice processing. And then we will understand how these can be controlled by using evaluated receipt settlement process. Before we go into the details, do not forget to like and share the video and a sub to the channel will be valued. Coming back to the topic, what are the most possible common issues with respect to invoice processing? Mismatch of invoice with goods receipt quantity, price mismatch between the purchase order and the invoice, many man efforts going into the evaluating and processing of invoices that increases the overall lead time, and ultimately the delay in payment to the vendor due to all these issues. So what is evaluated receipt settlement, which we claim will solve these issues? Evaluated receipt settlement is an arrangement in which the payments to the vendors are done based on the quantities received rather than the invoice copy sent by the vendor. The payment to the supplier is based on the number of units received and the price per unit stated in the purchase order. Just a brief background, the concept of ERS was first started in 1990s by some automotive industry companies like General Electric. They did it as the invoice processing was not adding any value but also increasing their turnaround time. So now let us understand how ERS will benefit us. Firstly, there is no quantity and amount mismatch on the invoice since there is no supplier invoice. Second, the entire invoice processing can be largely automated. Third, it eliminates most of the non-value adding activities associated with the payables function. And finally, given the level of automation, now the suppliers can rely upon the more consistent payments. Now let us see how this new process flow looks with the ERS coming into the picture. First, the vendor is informed and aligned about the ERS process. Next, a purchase order is created in SAP and the supplier is informed to not send any paper invoices. Supplier then sends the advance shipment notice to the buyer, which is electronic. This is verified against the goods receipt in SAP. Invoice is now automatically generated in the SAP based on the goods receipt that we have posted. Payment is done to the vendor based on the price maintained in the purchase order and the quantity recorded in the goods receipt. So without changing much of the entire process of procurement, ERS smoothens the invoice processing in the purchase cycle. However, the ERS process is not that all easy and flawless. Although this approach is significantly more efficient than the traditional accounts payable process, it requires a high degree of coordination between the supplier and the purchasing entity. Let us now see how the invoice is created with ERS activated. I have a purchase order already created in the system, 1519. Now I will go to the transaction MIGO to post the goods receipt for this purchase order. Let us give the purchase order number 1519. Enter the storage location and item OK and post it. I am just posting a normal goods receipt in the normal way which we used to do it. Now after the goods receipt has been posted, the ideal way is now to go to the transaction MIRO to post the invoice. But with ERS enabled, invoice is posted automatically by executing the transaction MRRL. This is a transaction where you can post the invoices automatically in bulk, not only for one individual purchase order, but you can post for many purchase orders together. Here we need to give the company code, plant, and also there are various other selection criteria by which you can select the purchase orders for which you want the invoice to be posted. Let me give the company code, the plant. Here we also have the option 
tell the system on how or what level the system should sort the documents which have been selected based on the criteria. Is it based on the supplier or per purchase order or per item or per the delivery document. Now let us select the default one per supplier and we are in the test run mode and now executing it. Here we can see the different purchase orders and the available goods receipt for which the invoice can be posted. We see two documents here, the ending with 50 and ending with 52 and only for one document we have this postable indicator enabled. The other document is a written delivery so we cannot post an invoice for this one and that is the reason we do not see the X here for this under ERS postable. If you want we can also select one of these items and if you click on exclude from ERS then the system will not consider this particular purchase order and the goods receipt for automatically posting the invoice under evaluated receipt settlement. Let us go back and remove the test run and execute it. You see now the FI document has already been posted for this one. Click on this. You can directly see the FI invoice. We did not go through the Miro transaction and this has been automatically posted from MRRL. You can also post the invoices for multiple purchase orders by just one click with ERS. If you'll have a look at this invoice document, it is very much same as the normal Miro invoice that we post. In fact, the system also uses the same OBYC settings that we use for normal Miro invoice posting. So this is how you can automate the entire process of the invoice posting by using ERS. You need not always manually execute this transaction. You can also schedule a bad job by creating a variant so that the system runs at a regular intervals and select all the documents which are ready for invoice posting and the invoice will be posted automatically. Now let us go to the configuration part. The configuration of ERS is pretty simple. Two important steps. The first one is to enable the ERS indicators in the vendor master, that means the business partner. And the second one is to enable the ERS in the purchase order. Now let us see the first step. We are in the business partner transaction under the purchasing tab of the vendor master. Now under this purchasing data tab, we need to enable the ERS indicators. The first one is the GR based invoice verification. Now this needs to be enabled for ERS to work. By enabling this indicator, we are specifying that the provision has been made for the goods receipt based invoice verification for a particular purchase order item. And the next one, we need to enable the automatic evaluated GR settlement return. Now this one specifies that the automated evaluated receipt settlement for the return items is allowed for this particular vendor. Now the most important one is to enable the third checkbox which is evaluated receipt settlement. By selecting this indicator we are specifying that the ERS or the automatic generation of invoices is now enabled for this vendor for all the purchase orders for which the goods receipt is now created. The next one is the purchase order. Under the purchase order under the invoice tab we need to ensure that the GR based invoice verification checkbox is enabled. Also the ERS checkbox is enabled. This ERS checkbox is visible only if the supplier for which you are creating this purchase order has the necessary ERS related options enabled in the master data which we had just now saw. Now one more important thing in the purchase order is whenever you want to use the ERS for a particular purchase order then that purchase order should have tax code mentioned in the purchase order. It is mandatory otherwise the system will throw an error and it will not allow to proceed further. Now the next important step is to maintain partner functions in the business partner. Under the purchasing section, under the partner functions, you need to ensure that the invoicing party PI partner function is enabled for the business partner. If you are not able to add the partner functions here, that means you need to do the necessary configurations. It can be done under SPRO, under materials management, purchasing. Here you will have something like partner determination. Under partner rules, you need to define partner rules if at all not defined, but by default you will have all these partner rules like PI and B and all this. Now you need to enable permissible partner rules per account group. So you need to map the partner functions with the vendor account group that you have created. Now if you see here, I have done it for my vendor account group. The PI is enabled for my vendor account group. After doing this in the next node, so partner settings in the supplier master data. To define a partner schema, create a new entry. I have already created. And here you need to select what are the partner functions that you require. Now this partner schema is to be assigned to the account groups. This is the group that I have created and I have assigned it here. 
Now this is the necessary configuration for partner functions and once it is done you need to define the partner function in your business partner. So this is all about the configuration that you need to do in the master data and after this you need to enable certain conditions and procedures for ERS. The transaction code is NACE. Here you need to select the appropriate application. We are selecting MR which is invoice verification and for this one we need to create condition records. Now clicking on condition records. The output type here is the ERS procedure. So double click on this ERS procedure. For the combination of company code and invoice. Okay. And this is the company code and this is the invoicing party or which is the supplier. Now execute it. Here you need to map the appropriate partner function for which you want the ERS to be created. Just enter the partner function PI for the respective invoicing party and save it. One more important step is to go to the communication tab here. Now ensure that you have given the default output device here so that the system can print out the forms if necessary. I have given LP01 and click save. The next step is to configure procedures for the invoice verification. Now click on procedures. Here the procedure that we require is the ERS procedure. So select this one and go to control. By default you will have these steps here and click save. This is all the configuration that is required for ERS. Now the next step is directly go to the transaction ME21N and post the purchase order. I am loading from my saved template. Just ensure that the necessary checks are available for ERS. The GRE based IV is enabled, ERS is enabled and the tax code is given. Now save the purchase order and post MIGO. Item OK, enter the storage location and save it. Now the next step is go to the transaction MRRL. Give the plant, the supplier, the company code and I am directly executing by removing the test run. And here you can see for the reference document which is the material document which we have just now posted for this particular purchase order. The invoice has already been posted. This is the Miro document. You can click on it. And if you want to see the FI document, this is the one. So this is how the evaluated receipt settlement concept works and how it automates the invoice processing and reduces various complexities and delays that are caused by invoice processing. I hope you like this video. Do not forget to like and share this video and also subscribe to the channel to be notified on my next videos. You can now click on the join button and become a super member of this channel and get access to the member exclusive content and also contribute to create more such videos. Thank you and see you in the next video and until then it's Abhiram signing off. Stay safe.